ESpedia. General Studies Video Lectures. Notes and Practice. Question sets for Engineering Service Examination and other UPS conducted examinations. In this video we are discussed a subtopic of energy and environment which is environmental pollution. And the first topic comes under environmental pollution is air pollution. Air pollution is the introduction of particulates, biological molecules, or other harmful materials into Earth's atmosphere, causing damage, diseases and death to living organisms. Industry and transport are the largest sources of air pollutants and emission of these pollutants results in high levels of particles and soot in the air and can cause smog to form. Air pollutants can be either gases or aerosols particles or liquid droplets suspended in the air. They change the natural composition of the atmosphere and can cause damage to natural water bodies and the land. Air pollution has both natural and human sources. Natural air pollution Dust from natural sources usually large areas of land with little or no vegetation. Methane, emitted by various sources. Rodding gas from radioactive decay within the Earth's crust. Smoke and carbon monoxide from wildfires. Vegetation, in some regions, emits environmentally significant amounts of volatile organic compounds vox on warmer days. These vox react with primary anthropogenic pollutants specifically, NOx, SO2, and anthropogenic organic carbon compounds to produce a seasonal haze of secondary pollutants. Black gum, poplar, oak and willow are some examples of vegetation that can produce abundant vox. The reproduction from these species results in ozone levels up to eight times higher than the low-impact tree species. Volcanic activity, which produces sulfur, chlorine, and ash particulates. Anthropogenic sources. Stationary sources include smokestacks of power plants, factories and waste incinerators, as well as furnaces and other types of fuel-burning heating devices. In developing and poor countries, traditional biomass burning is the major source of air pollutants. Traditional biomass includes wood, crop waste and dung. Mobile sources include motor vehicles, marine vessels, and aircraft. Fumes from paint, hairspray, Varnish, aerosol sprays and other solvents. Waste deposition in landfills, which generate methane. Methane is also an asphyxiant and may displace oxygen in an enclosed space. Asphyxia or suffocation may result if the oxygen concentration is reduced to below 19.5% by displacement. Military resources such as nuclear weapons, toxic gases, germ warfare and rocketry. Particulate matter from mining activities. Types of pollutants. 1. Primary pollutants. These are emitted directly into the air from sources at the Earth's surface. Examples are greenhouse gases. 2. Secondary pollutants The regional gases can also react chemically in the atmosphere to form other compounds which are known as secondary pollutants. One of the main results of secondary pollution is photochemical smog. Apart from gases, the second type of pollutant is particulate matter which consists of a wide range of liquid and solid particles known scientifically as aerosols. 
The smallest of these particles are hazardous to human health. As with the gases, particles can be directly emitted into the air or can form from gases. For example such particles from wood burning can cause a brown haze over the region and larger particles may interfere with plant growth because they deposit on the leaves. National Carbon Aerosols Program CAP India launched the Black Carbon Research Initiative as part of the National Carbon Aerosols Program CAP. This is a joint initiative of several government ministries and leading research institutions. Black Carbon BC is the result of incomplete combustion of fossil fuels, via fuel, and biomass. It consists of elemental carbon in several forms. Black carbon warms the atmosphere due to its absorption and by reducing albedo when deposited on snow and ice. Lifetime of black carbon in the atmosphere is only a few days to weeks, compared to CO2 which has an atmospheric lifetime of more than 100 years. Aerosols are suspended particulates in the atmosphere and have implications for climate and health through different mechanisms direct and indirect climate forcing by aerosols depend on the physical and chemical properties of the composite aerosol, which consist mainly of sulfates, carbonaceous material, sea salt and mineral particles. Among the various aerosol types, Black carbon aerosol assumes most importance due to its high absorption characteristics, which in turn depends on its production mechanism. Until the late 90s, sulfate aerosols had received most attention because of its scattering effects and its ability to act as cloud condensation nucleus CCN. Studies carried out during the late 90s, however, have identified carbonaceous aerosols as one of the most important contributors to aerosol forcing. Carbonaceous aerosols are the result of burning coal, diesel fuels, biofuels and biomass burning. Indoor air pollution. The air pollution types mentioned so far are also known as outdoor air pollution. Indoor air pollution is also a very important problem. The air within homes and other buildings can sometimes be more polluted than the outdoor air even in the largest and most industrialized cities. Indoor air quality is an important concern for the health and comfort of the occupants. Some of the sources of indoor air pollution are 1. Raden Radon is an invisible, radioactive atomic gas that results from the radioactive decay of radium, which may be found in rock formations beneath buildings or in certain building materials themselves. Radon is the second most frequent cause of lung cancer, after cigarette smoking. 2. Second and smoke it is tobacco smoke which affects other people other than the active smoker. It includes both a gaseous and a particulate phase, with particular hazards arising from levels of carbon monoxide and very small particulates. 3. Biological chemicals they can arise from a host of means like moisture-induced growth of mold colonies and natural substances released into the air such as animal dander and plant pollen. They are allergens and aggravate astama. 4. Volatile organic compounds Vox They are emitted as gases from certain solids or liquids like paints and lacquers, pesticides, building materials and furnishings office equipment, correction fluids, glues and adhesives, permanent markers, and photographic solutions. 5. 
carbon monoxide sources of carbon monoxide are tobacco smoke, space heaters using fossil fuels, defective central heating furnaces, and automobile exhaust. 6. Bacteria Many bacteria of health significance found in indoor air and on indoor surfaces. 6. Ozone Ozone is produced by ultraviolet light from the sun hitting the Earth's atmosphere, lightning, certain high voltage electric devices, and as a byproduct of other types of pollution. Sources of indoor air pollutants are of many types and this is a serious problem particularly in poor countries where the standard of living is low. Air freshener Many air fresheners employ carcinogens, volatile organic compounds and known toxins such as phthalatesters in their formulas. Most of the products that have been studied contain chemicals that can aggravate asthma and affect reproductive development. Emissions and air quantification. Burning fuels such as coal, oil, gas and petrol to produce energy and to power vehicles causes the emission of many different chemical species into the atmosphere. Large amounts of both gases and particles are emitted into the air when coal is burnt in power stations. The gases emitted include sulfur dioxide SO2, nitrogen oxides NOx, carbon monoxide CO and carbon dioxide ECO2, and the dust contains heavy metals such as leaf PB, zinc ZN and cadmium CD. The exhaust gases from petrol engines contain carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons, some sulfur dioxide and solid particles. Diesel engines emit less toxic gases but may emit more particles. Metallurgy is the main industrial source of air pollution delivering primarily sulfur dioxide SO2 and highly toxic heavy metal containing dust. Steelworks emit large amounts of carbon monoxide CO, and aluminum works produce lots of fluorine which is very harmful to living organisms. Particles not only come from the combustion of fossil fuels, but also from the road surface and from the car tires and the brakes. Most cars are now equipped with catalytic converter, which significantly reduce the amount of pollutants being emitted. However the numbers of cars globally is still rising and vehicles are still an important source of air pollution. The catalysts in catalytic converters are made up of heavy metals including platinum, palladium and rhodium. Increasing numbers of cars and therefore catalytic converters mean that levels of these metals are increasing in the atmosphere. Emission factor is a representative value that attempts to relate the quantity of a pollutant released to the atmosphere with an activity associated with the release of that pollutant. These factors are usually expressed as the weight of pollutant divided by unit weight, volume, distance, or duration of the activity emitting the pollutant e. g kilograms of particulate emitted per migram of coal burned. Such factors facilitate estimation of emissions from various sources of air pollution. Negative effects of air pollution. Air pollution has an impact on both local and global scales. Harmful substances which are emitted into the atmosphere in one country are transported by the wind and cross over national borders. Global negative effects of air pollution include the enhanced greenhouse effect and the ozone hole. Smog and acid rain are the best known local effects and smog, in particular, affects people living in urban areas. Air pollution is a threat to our health and can also cause economic losses. Humans
It is detrimental to human health causing major respiratory disorders. Hay fever, asthma and bronchitis are caused due to air pollution. Sulfur dioxide is responsible for cough, spasm of larynx and reddening of the eye due to irritation of membranes in the eye. Hemorrhage and pulmonary disorders are resulted even with very low concentrations of ozone. Beryllium causes beryllosis. Dusts, grits and smokes cause tuberculosis and silicosis, whereas heavy metals are carcinogenic in nature and develop dermatitis and ulcers of skin. Nickel may cause lung cancer. Animals the forage crops are sometimes contained with metallic pollutants, such as, lead, arsenic and molybdenum in mining and thermal power plants area due to air pollution. The domestic animals feeding on contaminated fodder suffer from different diseases. Air contaminated with ozone causes pulmonary changes, edema and hemorrhage in dogs, cats, and rabbits. Animals feeding on fluoride compound containing fodder may suffer from fluorosis. Cattle and sheep are most frequently affected animals. Hyperplasia of dental enamel and bone lessening are the other effects caused due to excessive fluoride in the body. Plants Plants are affected by various air pollutants. Excessive sulfur dioxides make the cells inactive and finally are killed. At lower concentrations, brownish-red color of leaf, chorosis and necrosis take place. Tomato is affected by ammonia and radish, cucumber and soya bean are affected due to hydrogen sulfide. Ethylene causes epinacity and early maturation of plants. In India in 2014, it was reported that air pollution by black carbon and ground level ozone had cut crop yields in the most affected areas by almost half in 2010 when compared to 1980 levels. Materials and Atmosphere Increasing carbon dioxide concentration increases the temperature of the Earth. Depletion of ozone layer due to fluorocarbon of aerosol causes the exposure of UV radiation which is lethal. Different metals, such as iron, aluminum and copper are corroded when exposed to contaminated air. Building and other materials are disfigured by deposition of soot. Secondary pollutants derived from primary air pollutants. In bright sunlight, nitrogen, nitrogen oxides, oxygen and hydrocarbons undergo photochemical reaction. As a result, powerful oxidants, ozone, aldehydes, sulfuric acid, peroxyacetyl nitrate pan, peroxides, etc. are produced. They form photochemical smog. Smog. The word smog is the combination of the word smoke and fog. It was invented around 1911 by the physician Harold Desvoir. There are two kinds of smog. 1. London type smog burning coal leads to emissions of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and dust. When these pollutants mix with Fog, droplets of highly corrosive sulfuric acid are produced in the air. It occurs at very cold temperatures. 2. Los Angeles type or photochemical smog. This type of smog forms on sunny days and is the result of emissions from traffic, nitrogenous oxides from car exhausts and Hydrocarbons react in the presence of sunlight to produce a noxious mixture of aerosols and gases. 
photochemical smog contains tropospheric ozone, formaldehyde, ketones and pan-peroxyacetyl nitrates. Normal tropospheric ozone levels are less than 0.04 ppm but ozone levels can be as high as 12 ppm in these smogs. The substances in these smogs are irritating to eyes and can damage respiratory system. They also affect vegetation. This type of smog is rather common now in large cities. Acid rain Clean rain is slightly acidic naturally but when the PV rain falls below 5.6, we call it acid rain. Emissions of the two air pollutants, nitrogen oxides NOx and sulfur dioxide SO2 are the main reasons for acid rain formation. Nitrogen oxides NOx equals NONO2 and sulfur dioxide SO2 are emitted during fossil fuel combustion and then undergo reactions with water in the air to form the nitric acid, NO3 and the sulfuric acid H2SO4 found in acid rain. Acid rain affects all elements of the environment, surface and groundwater, soils and vegetation. It negatively affects food chains, reduces biodiversity and damages our world as discussed below. When soil becomes acidified, essential nutrients such as calcium cor and magnesium milligrams are leached out before the trees and plants can use them to grow. This reduces the soil's fertility. In addition, Acidification may release one aluminium from the soil. At high concentrations, aluminium is toxic and damages plant roots. This reduces the plant's ability to take up nutrients such as phosphorus, eventually leading to death. It leads to acidification of water bodies. Some 14,000 Swedish lakes located in acidic crystalline rocks, have been affected by acidification with widespread damage to plant and animal life as a consequence. Acid precipitation does not usually kill trees directly. Acid deposition destroys the surfaces of the leaves of trees and plants. This damage causes uncontrolled water loss and slows photosynthesis. It reduces the rate at which leaf litter decomposes, causes the death of useful microorganisms present in tree roots, and reduces the rate at which soil organisms including bacteria respire. Soil acidification releases metals that can harm microorganisms in the soil as well as birds and mammals higher up in the food chain. The most sensitive groups include fish, lichens, mosses, certain fungi and small aquatic organisms. Some organisms may be completely eliminated, reducing biodiversity. Acid rain also disturbs the natural cycles of sulfur and nitrogen. Toxic hotspots are locations where emissions from specific sources such as water or air pollution may expose local populations to elevated health risks, such as cancer. Urban, highly populated areas around pollutant emitters such as old factories and waste storage sites are often toxic hotspots. Some toxic hotspots in India are Bhopal. Pantacharu, AP and Alor in Cochin. Fly ash. When pulverized coal is burnt in the boiler of a thermal power station, a part of ash falls down at the bottom of the boiler and is known as bottom ash. Whereas The major portion of the ash comes out along with the flue gases and is collected through electrostatic precipitator or filter bags or other means before allowing the exhaust gases to escape through chimney. This is called fly ash.
Fly ash is categorized as hazardous waste and therefore, pollution control standards require that it be captured prior to release. However, it has found number of uses. The most common use of fly ash is as a replacement for Portland cement used in producing concrete. Concrete made with fly ash is stronger and more durable than traditional concrete. Fly ash concrete is easier to pour, has lower permeability, and resists alkali silica reaction, which results in a longer service life. Remedial measures. Some of the effective methods to control air pollution are as follows. 1. Source correction methods. Industries are major contributors towards air pollution. Formation of pollutants can be prevented and their emission can be minimized at the source itself. By carefully investigating the early stages of design and development in industrial processes for example, those methods which have minimum air pollution potential can be selected to accomplish air pollution control at source itself. Some of these source correction methods are I substitution of raw materials. A low sulfur fuel which has less pollution potential can be used as an alternative to high sulfur fuels and be comparatively more refined liquid petroleum gas LPG or liquefied natural gas LNG can be used instead of traditional high contaminant fuels such as coal. To process modification. Or if coal is washed before pulverization, then fly ash emissions are considerably reduced. B. If air intake of boiler furnace is adjusted, then excess fly ash emissions at power plants can be reduced. 3. Modification of existing equipment. A smoke, carbon monoxide and fumes can be reduced if open hearth furnaces are replaced with controlled basic oxygen furnaces or electric furnaces. B. In petroleum refineries. Loss of hydrocarbon vapors from storage tanks due to evaporation. Temperature changes or displacement during filling etc. can be reduced by designing the storage tanks with floating roof covers. C. Pressure rising the storage tanks in the above case can also give similar results. For maintenance of equipment an appreciable amount of pollution is caused due to poor maintenance of the equipment which includes the leakage around ducts, pipes, valves and pumps etc. Emission of pollutants due to negligence can be minimized by a routine checkup of the seals and gaskets. 2. Pollution Control Equipment Sometimes pollution control at source is not possible by preventing the emission of pollutants. Then it becomes necessary to install pollution control equipment to remove the gaseous pollutants from the main gas stream. Pollution control equipments are generally classified into two types. A. Control devices for particulate contaminants. B. Uncontrolled devices for particulate contaminants. A. Controlled devices for particulate contaminants. 1. Gravitational settle in chamber for removal of particles exceeding 50 μm in size from polluted gas streams. Gravitational settle in chambers are put to use. The gas stream polluted with particulates is allowed to enter from one end. The particulates having higher density obey Stokes law and settle at the bottom of the chamber from where they are removed ultimately. Two cyclone separators reverse flow cyclone instead of gravitational force. Centrifugal force is utilized by cyclone separators to separate the particulate matter from the polluted gas. 3. Fabric Filters Valos Filters In a fabric filter system, 
A stream of the polluted gas is made to pass through a fabric that filters out the particulate pollutants and allows the clear gas to pass through. Four electrostatic precipitators electrically charged particulates present in the polluted gas are separated from the gas stream under the influence of the electrical field. Five wet collectors scrubbers in wet collectors or scrubbers, the particulate contaminants are removed from the polluted gas stream by incorporating the particulates into liquid droplets. 1. Diffusion of pollutants in air. Dilution of the contaminants in the atmosphere can be accomplished through the use of tall stacks which penetrate the upper atmospheric layers and disperse the contaminants so that the ground level pollution is greatly reduced. The height of the stacks is usually kept 2 to 21 halves times the height of nearby structures. Dilution of pollutants in air depends on atmospheric temperature, speed and direction of the wind. The disadvantage of the method is that it is a short-term contact measure which in reality brings about highly undesirable long-range effects because they are less noticeable near their original source whereas at a considerable distance from the source these very contaminants eventually come down in some form or another. 2. Vegetation plants contribute towards controlling air pollution by utilizing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen in the process of photosynthesis. This purifies the air removal of gaseous pollutant CO2 for the respiration. Gaseous pollutants like carbon monoxide are fixed by some plants, namely, Caleus blueberry, Ficus variegata, and Fuscolus vulgaris. Species of Pinus, Quercus, Pyrus, Juniperus and Vitus depollute the air by metabolizing nitrogen oxides. Plenty of trees should be planted especially around those areas which are declared as high-risk areas of pollution. 3. Zoning Thys method of controlling air pollution can be adopted at the planning stages of the city. Zoning advocates setting aside of separate areas for industries so that they are far removed from the residential areas. The heavy industries should not be located too close to each other. New industries, as far as possible. Should be established away from larger cities this will also keep a check on increasing concentration of urban population in a few larger cities only in the locational decisions of large. Industries should be guided by regional planning. The industrial estate of Bangalore is divided into three zones namely light, medium and large industries. In Bangalore and Delhi very large industries are not permitted. Air pollution in India. Air pollution in India is a serious issue with the major sources being fuel wood and biomass burning, fuel adulteration, vehicle emission and traffic congestion. The Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act was passed in 1981 to regulate air pollution and there have been some measurable improvements. However, the 2013 Environmental Performance Index ranked India 155 out of 178 countries. The ambient air quality is monitored by the Central Pollution Control Board in association with various state pollution control boards, pollution control committees for union territories and near it across the country including in 35 metro cities in terms of sulfur dioxide SO2, nitrogen dioxide NO2 and PM10 particulate matter less than 10 micron under National Air Monitoring Program named.
The basic guidelines to prevent air pollution arising due to transport sector, industry sector, energy sector, etc. in metro cities are followed by different organs of the administration and concerned organizations. The steps being taken include interalia, strengthening of public transport, supply of cleaner fuels per auto fuel policy, use of beneficiated coal in thermal power plants, more stringent mass emission norms for new vehicles in select cities, pollution under control certificate system for in use vehicles, strict implementation of emission effluent norms in air and water polluting industries, etc. with a view to contain pollution in the cities. Concerned authorities implement city-specific ambient air quality improvement program for 17 identified cities. The central government has very recently established a national ambient noise monitoring network in seven cities, namely, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Lucknow, Bengaluru, Kanai and Hyderabad. To begin with, for systematic monitoring of ambient noise on 24x7 basis and for creation of baseline data. The RAT stage emission standards. The standards, based on European regulations were first introduced in 2000. Progressively stringent norms have been rolled out since then. All new vehicles manufactured after the implementation of the norms have to be compliant with the regulations. Since October 2010, the RAT Stage 3 norms have been enforced across the country. In 13 major cities, the RAT Stage IV emission norms for cars have been in place since April 2010. Government has announced that all two-wheelers, three-wheelers and four-wheelers will have to comply with Bharat Stage IV BSIV norms from April 1, 2017. It has announced plans to skip BSV norms and directly implement BS6 norms by April 2020. However, Compliance with the norms leads to increase in the cost of the vehicles. National Air Quality Index Aki it has been launched for monitoring the quality of air in major urban centers across the country on a real-time basis and enhancing public awareness for taking mitigative action. The Aki has been at present launched for 10 cities Delhi, Agra, Kanpur, Lucknow, Varanasi, Faridabad, Ahmedabad, Kanai, Bangalore and Hyderabad. Government proposes to extend the measurement of air quality to 22 state capitals and 44 other cities with a population exceeding 1 million. There are six Aki categories. Namely good, satisfactory, moderately polluted, poor, very poor and severe. The index considers eight pollutants PM10, PM2.5, NO2, SO2, CO, O3, NH3 and PB. The likely health implications of the six categories would also be provided with a color code. With this step, India has joined the Global League of countries like the US, China, Mexico and France that have implemented smog alert systems. Programs at critical stages of development.